in islam's teachings goodness takes the lead choosing what's right fulfills every need invitation to virtue invitation to virtue Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya wal Mursaleen Amma ba'd Fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Habibullah As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiyyullah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurullah My dear views of Mandi Channel Welcome back to another episode of Invitation to Virtue. Inshallah, in today's episode, my dear viewers of Madhi channel, we will discuss what our pious predecessor's passion was for Invitation to Virtue. Inshallah, and furthermore, we will dive into the fadai, the virtues of inviting people towards good. Inshallah, so therefore, my dear viewers of Madhi channel, before we start our topic at hand, let's listen to a virtue of reciting the rood upon the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alihi Wa Alihi Wasallam There are many blessed narrations describing the rewards of sending Durood upon the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alihi Wasallam The beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alihi Wasallam has said The person closest to me on the Day of Judgment will be the one who has recited Salat upon me abundantly in this world Another narration is that beloved Prophet Ali Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam has said Whoever recites Salat upon me once, Allah Azza wa Jalla sends 10 mercies upon him, writes 10 virtues deeds in his book of deeds. SubhanAllah. Look at the great reward, my dear viewers of Mandi Channel. For one Durood, so many blessings. So many blessings. So we shouldn't shy away, my dear viewers of Mandi Channel. And we should come forth and recite Durood upon the Prophet Ali. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam My dear views of Madni channel, our pious predecessors, they would not miss any opportunity of conveying invitation to virtue. They were not like us. They were human, but they were not like us. We create excuses to miss. They would create excuses to do with the act. So a big difference. Meaning they would not miss any opportunity of conveying the call to righteousness. And if anyone sought a device from them, they would bestow upon him madani pearls about betterment of his afterlife. And indeed, if one always engages himself in divine remembrance, whether in residence or in journey, realizing that Allah wa ta'ala is watching, as it is stated in the Surah Al-Alaq, part 30, Alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara. Translation. Did he not know that Allah is watching? Then one will remain very fearful and careful about sins, refraining from disobedience to Allah Taala and His Rasul Sallallahu Taala Alaihi Wasallam, publicly as well as privately. Those having the mistaken idea that they remain unobserved while committing evil deeds secretly should always keep in their mind that the evils Recording angel, the one who records the bad deeds, knows and is recording all the evil and the indecent deeds they assume to be secret. If anyone absolutely realizes it, he will feel so ashamed and embarrassed that he will prefer being buried into the ground and to remaining alive on it. It is mentioned in Ayah 18 of Surah Al-Qaf, Part 26, translation from Kunzul Iman. He does not utter anything but there is a watcher by him ready to record it. It's also mentioned in Ayah 10, 11 and 12 of Surah Al-Infitar, Part 30. وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِظِينَ كِرَامًا كَاتِبِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا تَفَعَلُونَ Translation from Ganzul Al-Iman. And indeed, there are some guardians over you. The respectable writers, they know all what you may do. A renowned commentator, a great, great thinker of the Ummah, Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali has stated, it became obvious that the deeds recording angels know our covert and our overt, meaning hidden and open deeds, because it is impossible to record them without being aware of them. 
Subhanallah. When the deed recording angels know our covert deeds, then why the sovereign of all angels and all creatures, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, will not be aware of the heart and the feelings of his devotees? My master Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali Madi Bizumadni Chalam. He expressed his feeling in the court of the greatest Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the form of the following couplet. Sare arsh par hai teri guzar, dil-e farsh par hai teri nazar, malakut mulk mein koi shay nahi wo jo tujh pe aya nahi. Allahu Akbar. That O Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you see everything, whether it's above the arsh or below the earth, nothing in both worlds is concealed from you. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa sallam Madi abuse of Madni channel One who realizes the impermanence of the world ponders over his death all the time and he remains occupied with reciting the Holy Quran meaning he realizes how useless or futile this world is so he remains himself occupied with the Quran Salat and Nabi making dhikr and worshipping Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will be successful in this world in the worldly life as well as the hereafter many people my dear viewers Mandi Chana they just want to be successful in this world they just forget the hereafter but whereas a one who ponders of the, on his death all the time and he remains occupied in reciting the Quran in doing dars in reciting the upon the Prophet Ali salatu wasalam in seeking knowledge he will be successful not only in this world but in the hereafter also. Whether one is resident, whether one is a traveler, everyone should spend time making dhikr, reciting Salat and Nabi, talking about beautiful and beneficial sunnan instead of engaging in useless and indecent conversations. Nabi Akram Ali Sallallahu has stated, one who remains attentive towards Allah wa Ta'ala and remembers him during his journey Allah Azza wa Jalla appoints a safeguarding angel for him and one who indulges in indecent couplets and poetry and useless chat, Allah Azza wa Jalla inflicts a shaitan on him. My dear viewers of Madni Chanan, we have just heard as well and there's, another, there's so many narrations my dear viewers of Madni Chanan that one can mention. There's one that Sayyidina Ali al-Murtaza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the line of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. He has narrated that the blessed and the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, there are four types of jihad. Number one, enjoining order, ordering people to do good. Number two, preventing them from evils. And number three, telling the truth when it requires patience. And number four, holding a grudge against transgressors. The one enjoining people to do good deed strengthens the hands of the Muslims, whereas one preventing them from evil puts the nose of transgressors out of joint. Sayyiduna Abdul Aziz the Baagh Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali Madi Wizumani Channel He has stated that one should not hate a transgressing Muslim in such a way that hatred is developed even towards his being. However, his wrong and impermissible deeds should be considered bad because his sins are the cause of hatred, are temporary, but the faith present in his heart is permanent. He is a believer and hence fully deserves to be loved. Therefore one should love him for, their, for these positive traits of him and only hate the misdeeds and the sins. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Madhivi Zumadni channel, a pious and a righteous brother can sit with sinners with the sole aim of calling them to righteousness, invitation to virtue, without forming friendship with them. With this translation from Kanzul Iman, with Khazain al Irfan also. It's mentioned, وَمَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ مِنْ حِسَابِهِمْ مِنْ حِسَابِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ وَلَكِنْ ذِكْرَى لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ And the pious are not accountable for them in the least, aside from giving advice so that they may abstain. Regarding this verse, Malana Naimudi Murada Badi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Aliya stated in the commentary Khazain al Irfan, this verse has made it clear that it is permissible to sit with sinners to advise them and to explain the truth to them. And what is the reward of conveying the invitation to virtue? Sayyidina Abu Zar Ghifari Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali has narrated 
that the Blessed and the Beloved Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam are stated, meeting your religious brother with a smiling face is sadaqa for you, is sadaqa for you, and calling people towards righteousness and preventing them from evil is sadaqa. Subhanallah, it's charity. So calling people towards righteousness, my dear views of Madni channel, this is a form of charity. Subhanallah. So therefore, my dear views of Madni channel, meeting with a smiling face, calling people towards righteousness, and preventing them from evil ones, were all declared as sadaqah in the above hadith. Subhanallah. How excellent is a trait of meeting people with a smiling face. Meeting people with a smiling face and explaining something to someone with a smile particularly facilitates a madni working of calling people towards virtue. And it produces fruitful results. And indeed a little smile of a person can greatly impress another person, causing a complete change in that person's life. On the contrary, meeting someone coldly, shaking hands with him inattentively, whilst looking here and there may break his heart and throw him into the pit of deviation from the right path. Because people take that to heart. So therefore, my dear views of Bandi channel, whenever you meet and converse with anyone, continue to smile at the time as long as possible. Uh, just upon this, I'd like to mention something, my dear views of Bandi channel, regarding smiling. Amir al we have observed that they smile a lot, especially when meeting uh, the brothers. Once they, they said that these parts of the face near the cheek is in pain. And the reason for this pain was excessive smiling. That learns the last time you heard that someone it hurts him when he smiles. SubhanAllah. These, were the, these are the pious men of Allah wa ta'ala. The blessed companions Ali Muridwan narrated that the blessed Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam would smile the most on appropriate occasions. That was in brackets. And Sayyidina Abdullah bin Haris radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that he did not see anyone smile more than the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa There's that share of Allah Hazrat ki jis ki taskeen se rote huwe has pade us tabassum ki adat pe laakho salam. Subhanallah. Madhi bhi zumani chanam. Allah Hazrat is Allah Hazrat. And Allah Hazrat rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi has wrote many uh, poetry in regards to Nabi Akram alayhi salatu wa salam. Moving on, Madhi Views Zumani channel, Sayyiduna Nufay Ama radiallahu ta'ala an was narrated that I once came across Sayyiduna Barra bin Azib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Holding my hand, he radiallahu ta'ala anhu shook hands with me and smiled. He radiallahu ta'ala anhu then asked, Do you know why I did so? I replied in the negative. Explaining to me, he radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that he was once privileged to meet the greatest Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa who did the same and then asked, do you know why I did so? Sayyidina Bara bin Azib radiallahu ta'ala anhu replied in the negative. The Nabi Akram sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa said, when two Muslims shake hands with each other at the time of meeting and both of them smile in front of each other for the pleasure of Allah wa ta'ala, they are forgiven before they are separate. So before they are separated, they are forgiven. Subhanallah, my dear views of Madhi Channel. Look, how much reward Allah wa ta'ala gives. Smiling is a form of invitation to virtue. Subhanallah. So my dear views of Madhi Channel, the words for Allah Azza wa Jalla in the hadith emphasizes a good intention. In any way, shaking hands with a Muslim and smiling when conversing with him will only bring about the reward of the hereafter and forgiveness when they are aimed at gaining the pleasure of Allah wa ta'ala. If they are aimed at gaining the impression of one's sociability or winning the favor of a millionaire or a politician or forming improper personal friendship based on selfishness, then ma'azallah, deriving sinful pleasure from the touch of the hands of an attractive person, this will lead to a destruction by the views of Madni channel. Moreover, Regarding when we invite people towards good, one should refrain from laughing because this puts a person off. Imagine my dear views of Madni channel that you are, someone is in talking to you and or you are talking to someone and he starts laughing. So how would you feel? Similarly, when you are given invitation to 
virtue one should refrain from laughing reason being is that it is not appropriate to laugh loudly as it is not a sunnah in fact it is from shaitan and how is this from shaitan Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that Nabi Akram sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said laughing is from shaitan and smiling is from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and Alama Abdul Rauf Manawi rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi has stated laughing means making sounds when smiling shaitan likes it and rise and captures the person laughing person whereas smile means expressing happiness with facial expressions for a short while without laughter a commentator, a great thinker of Ummah, Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan Naimi Rahimahumullah Ta'ala Ali, has said, Smiling is good and laughing is bad. Smiling was the blessed habit of the beloved Prophet Ali Salatu Salam. Therefore, when you meet anyone, meet him with a smile. This is an invitation to virtue. But remember my dear views of Madni channel, although it's from Shaitan, one should mention and also remember it's contrary to Sunnah and a bad act. Laughing is still not a sin. Therefore, if you see an Islamic brother laughing or a scholar laughing, you must never have any ill opinion on him. We have mentioned, my dear viewers money channel, don't laugh. So a question can be asked that, okay, don't laugh, then what should we adopt? It's mentioned that Nabi Akram Ali said, life was the answer for us. Now Nabi Akram Ali Salam would adopt more silence and would lightly and gently laugh at some times. Subhanallah. Hafiz ibn Hajar rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali said, The conclusion drawn from the study of various ahadith is that usually he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would only smile. At times he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would laugh lightly and gently. And it is obvious that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not laugh loudly. Question, did the companions laugh loud? It's mentioned by Sayyidina ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was asked whether the blessed companions radiallahu ta'ala anhu would laugh. He replied in the positive, adding that faith in their hearts was stronger than even a mountain. Now commentating above the hadith is mentioned that by Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan Ali, perhaps the questioner may have heard the hadith, more laughing makes the hurt heart dead. And he may have assumed that the blessed companions may never have laughed because they were spiritually living hearted people and hence did not use the word laugh at all. Mumadi views on Madni channel, smiling was we were just speaking about. So if you see someone smile, again, this is invitation to virtue. This is the learning phase. If you see someone smile, Madi views on Madni channel, what should we say or what should we do? It's mentioned that whenever you see someone smile, recite the following dua, which has been mentioned in the book of Sahih al-Bukhari. Adhaqallahu sinnaka. Ay may Allah azza wa jalla keep you smiling. Subhan, what a great dua! What a great dua, my dear viewers of Madni channel. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu taala ala Muhammad, sallallahu taala alaihi wa alihi wa sallama. Sayyiduna Abu Zar rahmatullahi taala alaihi has narrated that the Holy Rasul sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam stated, "Your smiling for your own brother is also sadaqa. Enjoying promoting good is also sadaqa. Preventing from evil is also sadaqa. Guiding the missing person is also sadaqa." Helping a weak-sighted man is also sadaqa. Removing a stone, thorn, and a bone from the way is also sadaqa. Pouring water from your mug into the mug of the brother is also sadaqa. Subhanallah. The Prophet Rahma sallallahu said, Every debt is sadaqa. And remember one thing, when we word, use the word sadaqa, here is mentioned, the act of giving charity crosses one's mind. Charity is also a form of sadaqa indeed, but... Let's learn the definition of monetary sadaqah. It is mentioned that the literal meaning of sadaqah is atiyyatun yuradu bihal mathwabatu lal makramatu. Ay, sadaqah is the gift given to gain the reward rather than to enhance respect. Alama Sayyid Sharif Jurjani Hanafi rahmatullahi ta'ala is defined monetary sadaqah in these words. Hiyal atiyyatu Tabtaghi bihal mathwabata min Allah ta'ala. Sadaqa is the gift given in the hope of earning reward from the court of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. So therefore my dear views of Mandi channel. What habit shall we develop? What habit shall we develop in our lives that our invitation to virtue is more impactful? In order to develop an habit 
and how do we have how do we develop this habit is by acting upon the sunnah and always remaining affiliated with the beautiful madni environment of Daud islami and traveling in the madni kafilat of Daud islami i like to mention one madni parable and inshallah upon this we will end today's episode that of a patient who had an internal illness but it was cured by the blessing of traveling in the madni kafila and islam al stated that he had been suffering from some internal disease for a long time the illness had been so severe that whenever he says that he went to sleep he would end up with trouble i he says that he spent a great deal of money on medical treatment but in vain he says i was deeply upset one day i heard the prayers are, i heard that prayers are answered in madani kafila therefore remember summa must have told him invitation to virtue here as well he says therefore plucking up the courage i travel in madani kafila alhamdulillah azza wa jalla i made dua during madani kafila by its blessings my illness was miraculously cured as if it has never existed in the first place subhanallah qalb par zang ho kafile mein chalo nafs se jang ho kafile mein chalo paon mein lang ho kafile mein chalo dard se tang ho kafile mein chalo sallu ala habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam if there is rust of sins on the heart travel with madni kafila if you have to fight your nafs travel with madni kafila even if you limp travel with madni kafila if you are sick of pain travel in madni kafila sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam therefore my dear viewers of madni channel we have heard how our pious predecessors will not leave any opportunity to invite towards virtue similarly following in their footsteps and we should take this upon board that whenever opportunity we get be that the weekly call to righteousness invitation to virtue we should do so if we see any islam brother doing something wrong invite him invite him to virtue meaning correct him in a good way and teach them teach your children teach your offspring teach your household and inshallah azza wa jalla invite them towards good and in as we mentioned in nadal al khairi kafa'ilihi that the one who invites is like the doer himself so may allah tabarak wa ta'ala allow us to wholeheartedly invite people towards virtue amin bi jahi nabi al amin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in islam teachings goodness takes the lead choosing what's right fulfills every need invitation to virtue invitation to virtue